Hey everyone, a um, little something different today. I uh, ended up getting myself Quit trying to come in here and peek on me. I hear the door opening. <laughs> Wife. I'm trying to record. Okay. I peeked at you through this hole. Okay. 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 Okay
too much and you'll you'll if you're looking for at different strippers it's a good idea to get the kind that's like a, a paste formula or a gel formula rather than liquid so it kind of sits on it better the reason I like to apply um, a very liberal amount is because um, like I said it needs a lot of a lot of ventilation because of the fumes and that creates uh, airflow which dries out the stripper really quickly so this has to get down eat through the the polyurethane top coat the the paint that's on it and the original finish that was that was on it because whenever I paint stuff I don't it's not stripped all the way down of course so I want it to be able to sit on here for a good 15 or 20 minutes without drying out so using a crap load of it is the best way to go and you'll see now it's already starting to bubble up and that means uh, that means that the stripper is working um, the paint with this formula is really really quick to start um, getting stripped and that's why it's important to get the, the 15 minute formula over the 30 minute formula the 30 minute formula is meant for um, mainly meant for stripping paint but I don't know why you wouldn't just get the strongest one because if this were me just only stripping the paint I could go ahead and strip it now so I'll let this sit for about probably about 10 or 15 minutes and uh, come back to it and strip it see if I can get away with doing it one time or two even two would be great it's better than three or four that I had to do on that one all right it's been about 15 minutes or so and uh, everything's looking pretty good I don't expect it to come off all in one one pass not with this much stuff on it so I'll go ahead and uh, take a shot at it and see how it goes so I have a lot of people ask me what I use to strip the tool is one of these plastic scrapers and I get these from like from Walmart for like a dollar maybe two dollars for a pack of three with one this size one that's wider and one that's about half this size these are these are great you don't want to use metal because it, it, you risk scratching the wood so let's take a look at this and see let's see how easy this comes off not too bad yeah it's definitely gonna take two passes maybe three So I have a lot of people that tell me that um, it looks so easy when I'm when I'm stripping. I think what it is is I've just found a balance of uh, when it's time to strip. If you do, if you wait too late, like I said earlier, when uh, when I said I like to apply a lot so that it doesn't dry up. The main purpose of that is so that it doesn't um, get real flaky. So if you've ever stripped and you're going like this and it's going then the stripper is dried out um, if you do it when it's when it's not really done yet you'll get it when it's a lot more liquidy than this but if you get it right at the right time it'll be like this and it's it's so much easier I mean that's not difficult at all that's something that I feel that uh, just comes with practice and it depends on your conditions if it's hot if it's cold so here's going to be the second application. I think this is all it's going to take. I definitely got a good amount of the paint off and I, I did see that the original protective finish was removed. Okay, so that's the second coat. Again, it's on there thick. We'll give it another another 15 minutes and that should be it after that I'll uh, clean it with mineral spirits and we'll have to let it dry for a few hours before it can be stained so we've got another 15 minutes or so past 
So stuff like this that isn't coming off a whole bunch um, is, is going to come off whenever I do the second part of this step, which is uh, the mineral spirits. And we'll, I'll apply mineral spirits to it and scrub it with some steel wool, some coarse steel wool. And what that does is takes off all of this, uh, it takes off the stripper residue that's left behind from the, from the scraper because it can't get it off. So you see how liquidy this is, like when I was talking about before? It's a little bit harder to work with, but that's because it, it, there's nothing there's nothing really else for it to be stripping. So it didn't really like coagulate with the with the paint like it did before. So at this point, um, everything's pretty much removed um, except for what's you know, the little wet spots. You can see this still has stripper on there. And I'm going to use mineral spirits to remove that, and that'll also get the leftover. You see a little, a little bit of white here. There's some paint here and paint along here. Um, I'll scrub it with some steel wool, mostly in the, in the direction of the grain. Um, you want to do that just so you don't get any scratches that are going to go uh, perpendicular to the to the grain and make it look a little weird. So you can pretty much put as much as you want on there. And I know I've said that I only go with the grain, but I got to spread it out. I'm not rubbing really hard when I do this. I'm just kind of spraying it out. And then even when I'm scrubbing this stuff off, I'm not rubbing really hard. So on the container it says safer low odor mineral spirits. Um, it, it has a lot less fumes than traditional mineral spirits that you'll get in like a metal can. And this is why it's important to have gloves because this is, you know, I can at least support myself. I can at least support the furniture and not get anything on me. After it's all scrubbed off, just a clean towel, clean all the mineral spirits off. So at this point, this chair is done as far as the stripping goes. It just needs to dry out. Um, depending on the temperature, it can be anywhere from like two to four hours. If you turn a fan on it, of course, it would help. You can do it as little as one hour if you can set it in the sun on a nice warm day. But you can see the difference in the wet one and the dry one over there. If uh, I was to go ahead and rush this and continue, um, the next step would be using sandpaper and it would just really mar up the wood. So it's good to just let it dry out. I apologize. This video is going to be so wonky with the audio. I keep forgetting to uh, turn on my uh, my wireless mic here, but I'll try to, I'll try to get it down for all the other ones. Um, so anyways, the, uh, the stripper is applied, um, you know, this one's already crackling, it's kind of cool looking, um, again, that's how you know that it's working, this one is the second one, it's just starting to crackle, so I'm going to let these sit again for 15 minutes or so, and then I'll strip these ones down, and pretty much after that, it's going to be a waiting game, you can see, that's the first one I did, uh, before I, I started doing any video, uh, here's the second one I did. It's starting to lighten up a little bit, which means it's drying. So if you take a look at them there. Um, so really um, here, the rest of this will probably take about, mm, I'd say about 45 minutes to get those two done. And then I'll have about two hours of dry time. I'll actually 
take my fan and turn it around inside my paint booth so that I get some airflow in here. And um, this stuff will dry out a lot faster. So um, that's, that's one thing you can do to help things dry out if you have a cool evening. The cool thing about stripping is it's not like paint where you have to worry about it uh, being above you know, 50, 55, something like that. You can pretty much strip in, in any weather and uh, get the same effect. So I'll, I'm gonna let this sit for another 15 minutes and I'll come back and we'll take this off. So I actually left this on for about 30 minutes this time. Um, again, I mentioned earlier that it's, you know, it's gotten cooler. I mean, I've got a jacket on and everything. I feel kind of confident that the stripper can kind of lay there a little bit longer. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Most of the time when you're stripping paint, you're gonna have to do it at least two times uh, to make sure that you get through the, the paint layer and the final finish. To be honest, on the top, I think because I left it so long, um, I, I'm, I feel like it's already gone through the finish, but the sides, you can see, they still need a little bit more work, so. I'm gonna go ahead and strip it a second time. Again, I said before that doing everything the same way is the best way to guarantee that you get everything done correctly and get it on a match. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and apply more stripper before I strip this. And that just lets me get a little bit ahead on this one. If you're doing this for money or if you're just trying to save time, this is a a good way to do it. So I think this is a good position from our perspective as furniture painters to show that even though we're painting over wood that you might think it's a, a sin to paint over that it can still be removed. So I'm kind of running out on, on my stripper. So I'm gonna transfer some of this extra over here. I'm gonna take some of the stripper that's on this one. I'm gonna transfer it over to this one. My biggest concern is making sure that I get all the stuff around the edges. That's usually the hardest part to get because it likes to, it likes to fall off. That's why it's really important to get the a paste or gel type of stripper and make sure you don't get the liquid kind. Uh, that way it'll kind of cling on a little bit better. You don't have to worry about it dripping off. So here I go with the second round of stripping on these pieces. Now that these have been stripped, we're gonna to move to the mineral spirits. I've got a new steel wool pad for these ones. Again, I'm just gonna spread it out. And then we come back and wipe off all the mineral spirits again. Now we're just back to the waiting game. These ones are fully stripped. Um, we're just waiting for them to dry after the mineral spirits. Then I'll be able to come back with some sandpaper and get everything finished. It's been a, about three hours. Everything is the same color, nice and dry. What I'm gonna do is I've got a, a little sander here. <laughs> this is actually my backup. Um, the other one that I've had for two years finally crapped out on me, but um, I've lost the bag to this one, so it does create a lot of dust. So I've got my mask on and 
um, got the garage open. But I've got 120 grit sandpaper on here and I'm gonna hit all of these and then I'll come back with 220 grit. <laughs> For the finishing work, I'm going to be using this uh, sanding sponge, and this is actually a dual sanding sponge. So we have 220 grit and 320 grit, and the 220 grit is on the upper side, the 320 grit is on the lower side. So now that we've sanded this with uh, 120 grit, I'm ready to do some 220, and I'm going to do it with, with the grain. I don't recommend holding sandpaper in your hand and sanding because you really only get the pressure of your fingers. So while you feel like you're, you know, in this area that you'd be doing a flat area, you're really only pressing down here, here, and here. So you get an uneven sanding surface. These two just need some 320 now. But I feel it, it's nice and smooth. Just take a little brush and dust it off. Now that everything is stripped and sanded and ready for stain, it's time to go ahead and put the stain on. Minwax dark walnut, which is what we used on the top of the table. So we're gonna use that on this too. So I'm just gonna, again, a liberal amount All right, I've moved the table out of here. I'm really happy with the way that the seats have turned out. They match really well with the table. Once they get the polyurethane on them, they'll look a lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray that. There's the first coat of polyurethane. Uh, I'm not sure what I sound like with my mask on, 
but this is just a light coat. I'll do three more coats like this. My mistake again, I made, a, made the mistake of not hooking up my audio correctly. But here I am, I, I just sprayed my second coat and everything is looking great. This is the final wet coat. The polyurethane, when it's in a can, it has a white, milky look to it. So that's why it looks like that. But when it dries, it'll be nice and clear. Uh, we'll let this dry for about three hours. And then you guys will get to see the chairs. This project is done now. I got the chairs stained. They're glazed and everything to match the table. All the glazing underneath here. So it took a little bit of extra work, but I got it done. Pretty, pretty happy with everything. So this project is complete. I appreciate everybody watching. The next thing I should be working on will be this. Uh, hopefully I can knock out a cool video on it. So I appreciate, again, everyone watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you are subscribed, uh, down there by the subscribe button is a little bell that will notify you when I post stuff. So make sure you hit that too. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch y'all later.